Welcome to the Manifesting Latina podcast, where you'll learn to unlock your incredible power of manifestation and connect deeply with yourself. I'm Dr. Norma Reyes, your guide and host, helping you manifest a life filled with purpose, abundance, and inner wisdom. Together, we'll dive into the art of manifestation, practical techniques, personal growth, and the magic of aligning with your deepest desires. No more feeling stuck or disconnected. It's time to awaken your inner manifester. Embrace your spirituality and create a life that truly resonates with your soul. Tune in each week to the Manifesting Latina podcast and begin to manifest your dream life. Hey everyone, welcome back. Today I will be talking to you all about my personal money manifesting routine and how you can start your own money manifesting routine. All right, so I'm going to give you all the disclaimer that I don't have an outline for this. I am literally going to be looking at what I do on my iPad in my notes. And the reason for this is because I have baby on me and I had a different episode in mind, but I decided that I wanted to do this one talking to you all about my money manifesting routine. Now, this is a routine that you can modify for yourself in regards to it wanting to bring in more abundance, love, career, relationship, whatever you are wanting to manifest you can do it with this. But specifically this month, in the month of April, I am actually participating in a quantum leap challenge. It is a 21 day quantum leap challenge with my new manifestation coach, Taylor Eaton. I will link her information in the show notes. So if you're interested in learning more about her and how she does manifesting, but I wanted to share with you all what I'm doing for this month to quantum leap into a 100k business revenue 100k and i should say 100k in sales because revenue is different but you know semantics 100k a year all right so let me talk about routines here for a little bit if you're new here you may not know i am like probably routine queen i love having routines it works for me. Know that I don't do them exactly the same every single day. It's kind of more like my morning routine toolbox, my morning routine buffet, um, because I don't do it exactly at the same time every day, but it is a, a list of things that I want to get done. Now, I have a morning routine I like to do, an evening routine I like to do, and then I also have like a daily habits list. Now, I have been working and refining my routines for a long time. If you're new to creating a routine, new to even just thinking about doing something regularly, start off small and choose. Do I want to do it in the morning? You know, mornings usually help ground you. If it's in the evening, in the evening, they help you unwind. They help you release the day's energy, whichever calls to you most like, oh, I want to be grounded before going to work or I want to be able to just kind of release and unwind the day's energy. So start there. And, you know, if morning or evening sound like I can't even get things done, think about doing it during your lunch time or midday, whatever that is for you. And you can do it then as well. Whatever works for you is what's going to work for you and be sustainable. I've been doing a routine, I think when I started my PhD program, I don't know, it's been a long time, but I didn't have it written down. It was just something that I'm like, oh, okay. But now that I'm like at this more expert level, I have a whole thing that I have in my digital bullet journal 
now. I used to have a paper one and I still miss that. But because of baby, because of the way life is right now, having a paper one is just not feasible. And it's so much easier just to have a digital version of my bullet journal-ish planner thing that I've created. I call it my mega planner. It's the 2024 mega planner, the manifesting Latina. <laughs> So now let's get into the money manifestation routine that I have going before I take us off on a tangent. I'm going to share what I do. I'm going to give you a little bit of information on it. And then I'm also going to give you two that I believe you should start in if you are very much in the logical side. And I'll explain what that means here in a bit. So The things that I do for my money manifestation routine specifically, and again, I kind of fit this in throughout my day. It's not something I do like in 15 minutes or an hour. I just make sure that I get it done throughout the day. So that's specifically for the money manifestation because I do have other routines that I do. And so I wanted to share that as well. Okay, so here are the six, six, five things, kind of like a It's a lot of different things. So again, do not feel like this is what you need to do. Pick one or two that you're like, oh, I want to kind of try that. That seems fun. And anything that does not seem fun, anything that seems overwhelming, do not even attempt to just be like, that's not for me right now. And it's okay. That's not for me right now. And that's okay. So I do a quantum leap meditation. This is the specific meditation that the manifestation coach has given us. And so I do that. She has some mini ones that she also included in case we wanted to recalibrate or, you know, I'm not going to go into those details, but anyway, I haven't tried the mini ones yet, but I do do the quantum leap meditation once a day. And that's the goal, at least so far it's been going great. And then I also do an EFT tapping, emotional technique, freedom tapping. If you're unfamiliar with tapping, Google it on YouTube. I will link the specific one that I'm doing into the show notes so that you have that. Please know that tapping is one of those two that I was going to recommend that if you are too much in the logical side of thinking, this will help just get you out of your mind and more into your physical body. And I'll go into each of these a whole lot more. So quantum leap meditation, EFT tapping, a subliminal a simple and again, I'm not gonna. I'm gonna just list them all and then explain them because I keep saying I'm gonna do that and then I don't. This is what happens when you don't have an outline. So subliminal money affirmations, written affirmations, scripting, limiting belief, journaling. So those are the things that I'm doing. I also have a check in that I do with myself, and that's you know asking myself what is the most aligned thing for me to do next. For example, in the mornings. I write down what I want to do the day. I have actually several different templates that I use in the morning. So some days if I have like a lot of things scheduled, I will use the one that has like the time where I actually write down everything I'll be doing based on time. Then I have another one that's just more loose. It's just kind of like, what do I want to get done today? That I use on days that I don't have a lot of appointments or sessions. And I like the freedom of doing that because some days like I don't have anything scheduled. And I think having the time there can feel overwhelming. So know that you can be flexible in how you do things. Now, I will say some of you do need that time out schedule every single day. And that's okay. Just know like that's what you need. And some people need not that maybe it's more of a overwhelming or you just like to have the freedom of not having the set times for certain things, especially if you have kids. But again, really be reflective on what it is that you need. So I ask myself, what is the most aligned thing for me to do right now? So this morning, I actually did not plan on recording a podcast episode But it has worked out. I really just listened to what's my next best thing to do. My four-year-old is also here. So if you hear him, it's just is what it is. Okay, something else that our coach has suggested that we do that I haven't really been doing, but I want to share with you all. One of them is picking one new thing each day that you value about yourself. So you can include that in your routine 
What is something that you value about yourself? Now that I read it, I'm like, I gotta, I gotta start doing this more. And then another thing that she had suggested us for do, and this is like a check-in. You can include this as one of the things you do. This is not one of the things that I have listed down in my absolutely doing, but I do have it down in like, oh, okay, like I'm going to do a check-in with myself. Which of these three do I want to do? And the third one she suggests is daydreaming about the wealth you desire. So this is kind of like little mini visualizations that you can do. You can be like, oh, what would it feel like? So for me, what would it feel like to be making 100K in my business this year? The release, the freedom, the feeling of like peace is what I would be stepping into just to give you guys words on what that would be. It's hard to sometimes describe what you're seeing when you're visualizing yourself, especially the well you desire. If you struggle to connect with the emotions of what that particular wealth or whatever you're wanting to manifest, focus on just seeing, seeing what that would look like in your life, right? What would that mean? Would that mean that you'd have clothes that make you feel good or food that makes you feel good? Maybe even vitamins and supplements. You know, these are just things that are coming to me. So perhaps some of y'all need to be doing that. I know that I need to be doing that. Then I know that is something that I'm working on. And actually earlier this week, I had, um, First, I don't know what I did with my clothes. I've like <laughs> decluttered my closet so many times and I feel like I don't have, not necessarily I don't have anything to wear. I just keep wearing the same thing and it's gotten to the point that it's not that I don't like what I'm wearing. I just don't feel like it's giving me the energy and the vibes that I wanted to give me. And I've gotten rid of all of my jeans apparently. But earlier this week, I was like, okay, well, I just got to start off slow because, you know, putting in a new wardrobe, not having the income I currently want to have because I'm not working as many hours. And I'm like, okay, let me just start off small. And amazingly, I purchased two shorts and a pair of jeans that are supposed to be coming in soon. And I was just like, wow, it was only $50 for these three things from Old Navy. And so that actually made me feel good. And when you do things that align with that best version of yourself that I asked myself, right, what's the most aligned thing for me to do right now? I did go back and forth a little bit and I'm like, no, like I'm going to look back. If I don't purchase this today, I'm going to look back to today and be like, I should have just bought it. Actually, this happened with diapers. Target was having a spend a hundred, get twenty dollars back. And I also had like some promo from them. Like if I spent a hundred dollars, they'd give me ten dollars back. So it would have been like thirty dollars off if I had purchased these diapers. And I didn't, partly because I felt like, well, should I really be doing that? And this is how we self-sabotage. It was a one day, like this was the last day to do this sale, and I didn't. And I'm like, oh, why don't I do it? I know I need diapers. I know I need diapers. So why not? It's not going to hurt anything for me to buy diapers. It's either buy them now or buy them later. So sometimes we focus too much on the money side of things instead of like, oh, this is a good deal. And not to say that you need to be reckless in deals, but if it's something you're going to buy anyway, what is it a fact to buy it now versus later? And you can ask yourself that. And that's probably something I should have asked myself, but I didn't. And had I, I would have been like, well, there is no difference whether I buy it now or later. I'm not going to save $30 later. Diapers aren't going to be cheaper necessarily later. If anything, I'm getting a deal now. Anyway, so a question to ask yourself, what is it going to affect, right? Like now or later. So let me get back to what I'm doing what my manifestation, money manifestation routine is looking like right now for the month of April. And we'll see. We'll see if I keep any of these things going past April. So the quantum leap meditation, that's pretty self-explanatory. It's actually really, really neat. And my plan is to create a similar meditation for you all so that you can one, learn about quantum leaping and what that means. And then two, so you all can also do a quantum leap meditation. I have to tell y'all, I really enjoy doing it. 
It reminds me of, oh my gosh, this Interstellar, the movie Interstellar, that scene where he's like in between um, space and time and how he can see all the different timelines. That's what I think of at times when I'm visualizing. So super neat. That requires a whole other episode to explain what quantum leaping is, but that is something that I do. And then the EFT tapping is the emotional freedom technique tapping this is really 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 great if you one have been doing everything that you feel like you need to be doing like strategically but you're not getting the results like you're like but i'm showing up i'm doing all the things and all the things meaning like both practical things and then also like the spiritually aligned things and you're just like i can't seem to get any momentum towards what i want to manifest in regards to money abundance or whatever you're manifesting eft tapping is really great because it will help move stagnant energy and release blocks that you are having that maybe consciously you're unaware of, but subconsciously are there. We all have a lot of subconscious beliefs and some are from you and you're at this lifetime and some are from your parents. Some of them are from your ancestors, generations of limiting beliefs that are within us that you might not be conscious that you have. I know that for myself, logically, I know that I can make 100K a year. But there's blocks there, right? There's blocks that I have both conscious and unconscious. And so the EFT tapping for me really helps release that, really helps me get in a higher vibe as well. Because not only does it help release that stagnant energy, it helps you vibrate higher. And remember money, love, joy, everything that we are wanting to attract into our life vibrates higher than these lower, denser energies such as sadness and guilt and regret and resentment, bitterness. All of those have lower vibrations, like actual lower vibrations, not just like, this is not just words um, that people say, like there's actually energetic vibrations that those emotions have and money is a higher vibration. So EFT really helps you get in a higher vibration. And so, like I said, I will be linking it so you all can understand what that is better. I will say the first few times may, you may feel silly doing them because it's not something you've done before, but no, it is, it is what it is. You'll get used to it. I actually don't even mind anymore. Sometimes my husband will walk in. I don't know what he thinks when he sees me doing it, but you know, I'm doing them. So the next thing that I have is a money manifesting subliminal. This is a subliminal. So subliminal, if you're unfamiliar with them, I'm going to link an episode where I talk about them. But a subliminal is just similar to listening to affirmations. The difference is that your conscious mind isn't going to be rejecting what you're listening to because it cannot hear it. A subliminal is just words, affirmations layered with music on top. With the words being so inaudible for you, where you cannot hear it, where there's a threshold where you cannot hear the sound, but our mind can hear everything. Our subconscious mind always hears everything, senses everything. And that's why sometimes you're like, "Mm, that person gives me bad vibes because your subconscious is sensing something, right? And oftentimes you get told like, oh my gosh, you're overthinking or whatever it is. Listen to your vibes. If somebody isn't vibing with you, your subconscious telling you for a reason. This doesn't mean to make it into this huge dramatic thing either. Comport yourself. Be who you need to be at that moment and then do a cleanse. And you can listen to the last week's episode, Cutting Cords. So EFT tapping and the subliminal are two things that if you have been doing all the things and you're like, I can't seem to be manifest the money that I'm wanting, you probably have some deep rooted beliefs that either you're not working on or are unconscious about them. And so these will just help you get kind of underneath that. I definitely recommend listening to that, but I will definitely be doing one for you all so that you can really begin to 
listen to that and let go of any unconscious beliefs that you don't know that you have. And so you can start planting new seeds. So then, of course, I listen to money affirmations. Sometimes I go into Spotify. I've been working on curating playlists for myself on Spotify around money affirmations, just different playlists for myself. Once I have them a little more robust, I'll begin to share them. But definitely listening to money affirmations. Sometimes they're just people saying affirmations. Sometimes it's music because you know, who wants to just listen to someone reciting affirmations? One of my favorite ones is by Londrell. It's called Manifesting Money Mantra. And I just love where he's just like manifesting money. Now, please don't judge my singing skills. <laughs> and hopefully Emily can find the song and put a little blur up here so you guys can hear it. Yeah. I love hip hop and rap and I'm so happy when I hear music that sounds so similar, like affirmation music that sounds so similar to this hip hop and rap music that I listen to. I'm like, yes, I'm like bumping. This is a new type of, of club. <laughs> and then I do written affirmations. Some of these affirmations are related to money. Other ones are more related to what I feel like I need support in, in regards to what I want to manifest, right? My 100K a year. Let me see. I'm scrolling through my journal so I can read some of the affirmations I have written down. I've never really shared my affirmations that I write down. So here I am sharing because sharing is caring. One of them is I am a money magnet, of course. Who doesn't want to be a money magnet? I am a source of light and inspiration to others. I am an industry leader. I am so grateful for my spirit guides. Um, celebrating making six figures in 2024. That one's definitely, I'm going to make sure I write that one all year long. And then I love myself. And the last one is the universe has my back. That's from yesterday. So sometimes I change them up. Let's see. From two days ago, I put I'm a magnet for miracles. And again, I'm a source of light and inspiration to others. I'm an industry leader. I have all the answers within. I'm so grateful for my spirit team. So, and then I also have, this is from my affirmation little template worksheet that I have where I write my affirmations and then I always write one word to lead my day. Um, usually I write love. I don't know why love is always one that I just want to make sure I'm embodying and that actually is the episode I was thinking of sharing and doing this week, but instead I did this. So know that I will be talking about love and how you can use love for manifesting in some upcoming episodes. So many episodes on my mind. <laughs> and so those are just some affirmations. So it doesn't always have to be like, I make a lot of money affirmations, but affirmations that get you to be in that energetic field that energetic vibration of manifesting more money like what would you feel like what would you have to believe in order to manifest the money right like what were you be believing when you are making for my for example myself what am i doing what am i believing when i'm making 100k well i'm grateful for making 100k i'm believing that i am an industry leader I am believing that I am a lot, a light and inspiration to others. Um, I'm working with many clients and helping them manifest their dream lives. So remember, ask yourself what affirmation would align with the version of myself that already has what I am desiring. The last thing is scripting and limiting belief journaling. I put that one as two because I don't always script and I don't always journal on limiting beliefs. But those are things that I am working to do every day. Scripting is kind of future oriented where you would write what you are desiring as if it has already come, kind of like a journal entry that you are writing now, but is your future self writing. I know, very confusing. And then limiting beliefs, I have an outline that I use and really is looking at, okay, what, what is this belief helpful, right? Like if you have a belief that you have to work hard 
to make money, then ask yourself, okay, is that a belief that's helpful to you? How is it helpful? Um, ask yourself, how is it unhelpful? I mean, it's unhelpful to have that belief because then you have to, you are exchanging time for money and that is not how you make wealth. That's not how you make like an abundance of money because we have a limited amount of time. And if you limit yourself on how much money you can make based on time, it doesn't, it's not helpful. But I mean, you consciously know that, but there's somewhere unconsciously that it is helpful to you. And oftentimes it's because it makes us feel safe. It makes us feel secure. If we are working a nine to five, we know a paycheck is coming versus if we work in a different sense. Hey, baby's waking up. So if you are working with this belief that you have to work hard to make money, then you would be rejecting easy ways of money coming into you. So that's just an example of how to do that. And then you can ask yourself what's to rewrite the belief in a way that is supportive of you, right? So let's say you do have this belief that you have to work hard to make money and you can then the next best thing to write, because we can't just go from one belief to another belief, like an extreme belief, like, oh, I work zero hours and make money. <laughs> like, that's not going to work. You can't just take that big leap. But you can instead write, okay, um, instead of believing or affirming that you have to work hard, you can start saying that the value of my work comes back to me <laughs> sorry the baby's distracting me and also trying to make it make sense make it easy for you guys um so the value i put into my work comes back to me in money i'm trying to uh, you have to work hard to make money you are worthy of money regardless of the work it takes oh i like that better Right. And sometimes you have to play like that with them because it's not you you have to make sure that when you are making your affirmations that they resonate with you. Don't just recite some that you see on the internet. Um, you can surely do that in Google and all those things because that's how I started as well. Um, and still do, right? I still sometimes I go into GPT chat. I'm not trying to say you can't like find some, but adjust them make them your own and have them resonate with you right and start saying them out loud and be like mm, that doesn't really flow the way i want it right but when you start to say an affirmation that actually resonates with you that you created it will be more empowerful more <laughs> empowering more powerful i don't even know what i'm saying so money you can start saying when it comes easily to me or the value I put into work. Oh gosh, I already forgot what it's at. <laughs> but go back to listen to it. Baby's waking up. And so that's also distracting to me. I want to remind you that when you are creating your money manifesting routine, that you get to decide what that looks like. I am sharing what I am doing so that I can make six figures this year in my business. Now, I am doing this for the month of April. Will it change in May? Possibly, depending on how much I feel like is still aligning with me and what I want to do. But the six things I'm doing, well, six, seven-ish things I'm doing is I'm doing the quantum leap meditation, the EFT tapping, the subliminal, listening to a subliminal, listening to money affirmations or music, and writing down affirmations that support me and my money goals, and then scripting and journaling on my limiting beliefs. Remember, I also have that check-in that I do. And the questions for that was, what is the most aligned thing for me to do right now? Picking one new thing to value about myself and daydreaming about having the wealth I desire. So those are things I do. Re-listen to the episode a few times just to see what you want to add in your money manifestation routine. Pick one or two things 
please don't go overboard because like I said, I've been doing this for a very, very long time now and these work for me. I have the time freedom right now to be able to incorporate this into my daily life without it being a burden. Like, these are the things that I get to do, fortunately, because I do have time freedom, because I am home with baby, because I am my own boss in my business and decide when I work and when I don't. And I think, yeah, I am super grateful and blessed to be able to do that and show up when I want to show up for myself and how I want to show up. So remember that my current reality is a little different than you listening, but maybe, maybe it's not. Maybe you are also an entrepreneur and you get to choose how you spend your day. And remember that that's why you wanted to become an entrepreneur. And even if you're not, even if you are working a nine to five, know that you also can do that within your nine to five. You just have to believe you can. Um, that could be a whole other episode as well. Well, thank you for listening. And remember, if you love the podcast, leave me a review. If there's something that you want to ask me, send me a DM on Instagram. I love being there and hearing from you all. And remember, next episodes coming up will be about quantum leaping, how to use love to manifest. I also have on deck setting new moon intentions, a full moon release meditation and release affirmations that'll be coming up. I don't have dates for those yet because I am definitely stepping into the question of what's the most aligned thing for me to do right now and how to best serve you all. But if there is something that you are wanting on the podcast or even just on Instagram or my blog, just let me know. And I always love to be able to give and serve what you are wanting from me to help you manifest your dream life with more ease and flow and less hustle, right? Less hustle because it's time we are done with that. All right. That is it for today. I will talk to you all on the next one. Thank you for listening to the Manifesting Latina podcast. Did you love today's episode? Please help us grow by leaving a review, sharing with a friend, or on your social media. Let's spread the abundance and fun of manifesting.